The stock market's dropping, interest rates are rising. Are you confused about what to do with your TSP allocation this year? I'll share with you the correct TSP allocation for a potential recession. I'm Rich Carey, I retired from the military, a multimillionaire, through smart investing and very smart real estate decisions that I share with you. I've been featured on several large real estate and finance podcasts, but I have a confession to make. The TSP allocation you should use in a down market is exactly the same as in an up market or any market. The biggest mistake you or others will make in your portfolio is trying to time the market and adjust your allocation based on what's going on in the world. Real estate market crashing, global pandemic, elections, economy, unemployment, none of this matters. I'll show you the best way to invest in the TSP this year and any year with advice from Warren Buffett, Dave Ramsey, and several other money geniuses. I'll go over five TSP investment allocations showing funds and percentages. These are recommended by the best investors in the world. Really, any of these strategies will be fine. Pick the one that works best for you and don't change it no matter what's happening in the world. World. Later in this video, I'll talk about adding in a percentage of bonds to your allocation as you near retirement. This will save you when there are large dips in the market as you near needing that money. Let's start with these five different asset allocation strategies, all of which work great. Pick the one that feels right for you. Here's the five. The S&P 500 index, the total stock market index, Warren Buffett's investment advice, as well as the same from Dave Ramsey. People love his stuff. And the most popular allocation strategy by far for some reason, mine. Let's start now. The S&P 500 index strategy. This is the asset allocation I used right out of high school. The idea is simply investing in the S&P 500 index fund. This strategy is based on a letter from none other than Warren Buffett to his shareholders in 2013. Slightly paraphrased, he says, the goal of the non-professional should not be to pick winners, but should rather be to own a cross-section of businesses that in the aggregate are bound to do well, period. A low cost S&P 500 index fund will achieve this goal. The C fund in the TSP mimics the S&P 500 index, so all you need is 100% C fund to accomplish this strategy. Cake. The next allocation strategy is the total stock market index fund. This investment choice is popular and the recommendation of J.L. Collins in his book, The Simple Path to Wealth. By the way, this book is the best finance book out there so far next to the book I have yet to write. Instead of just investing in the largest companies that make up the S&P 500, you invest in medium as well as small companies. It's more diversified than the S&P 500, albeit with slightly more risk. If you choose the TSP's S fund, it is a mix of small and mid-sized companies not included in the S&P 500 index. So the combination of 80% C fund and 20% S fund will closely mimic the total stock market index fund. This is a essentially a mix of all companies in the US. Next is the Warren Buffett TSP allocation. Even though the first recommendation I made, investing in only the S&P 500 index comes from him, he actually has more specific instructions on how his wealth will be invested for his family once he passes away. He plans to invest it in a S&P 500 index fund, obviously, but he will add 10% bonds to his portfolio to lower the risk in a down market. In that same 2013 newsletter I quoted earlier, he states, my advice to the trustee could not be more simple. Put 10% of cash in short-term government bonds and 90% in a very low cost S&P 500 index fund. Luckily, the TSP's F fund is composed of bonds. So you can do the same thing as Warren with a 90% C fund and 10% F fund mix. I'd appreciate the advice, Warren. The next strategy is Dave Ramsey's TSP investment record. Recommendation. I love his book, The Total Money Makeover. His baby steps are the best for getting out of debt. His instructions are typical of Dave's approach to money. He suggests that you first pay off all your debt besides your primary residence and then have an emergency fund set up. Dave uses an international fund in his recommendations. Luckily, the TSP's I fund is an international stock index fund. Dave has two sets of recommendations. A more conservative TSP allocation recommendation of 80% C, 10% S, and 10% I fund, and a less conservative of 60% C, 20% S, and 20% I fund. Now I will reveal the quote, best investment strategy in the world so far, end quote. And until now, nobody has ever known how one of the most brilliant minds of our time invests my TSP. And so I'll tell you how I do it and why. Personally, I like the idea of having a little bit heavier weighted on small and mid-sized companies as opposed to just being all S&P 500 index. I could accomplish this with the total stock market index, but I wanted even more exposure to small companies. Additionally, I don't like the TSP's international fund. I haven't been investing in it. 
It doesn't have enough exposure to small and or developing countries, so here's what I settled on. This is known as the Rich Carry Worldwide Dominance TSP Portfolio, and up until now has been a safely guarded secret only known to Wall Street insiders. The allocation is, drum roll, 50% C fund, 50% S fund. I know I should be charging you for revealing my personal portfolio secrets, but I just have too much love in my heart and no one watches these videos anyway. Do not stress out about picking the right one of these investment strategies. It's probably mine. Any of these asset allocations will do far better than most people are doing, even with professional management, or should I say, especially with professional management. People with professional management tend to really underperform those who pick an easy strategy and stick with it. What I'm trying to say is professional managers aren't worth a damn. Yes, Edward Jones, I'm talking to you. My investment recommendations do not change year to year. I make this video each year, but I give pretty much the same advice. People want to hear different strategies depending on what's going on in the world, and that's a huge mistake. The biggest investment mistake people make with retirement investing is tailoring their strategy based on current events. Once you learn this, you are smarter than 98% of investors out there. Don't make these fatal mistakes in your TSP. The biggest is changing your allocation when the stock market's going down, also known as timing the market. Another crazy one, playing with TSP charts that claim to know the future. Another, selling before or after elections, buying on dips, selling on bad news, etc. You will lose a lot of money with these strategies, and if I see you do it, I know it's not Christ-like, but I'm going to laugh at you. Use my advice and the advice of the best investors in the world to make an informed decision about a long-term TSP strategy that you like. Finally, here is what you can and should change in your TSP portfolio each year. I made a separate video about this. Click that thingy up there. That video will be deep in the weeds about it, but I'll explain it quickly right now. Many people invest in 100% equities, which means 100% stocks. When I say stocks, that means mutual funds and index funds in addition to actual stocks like Apple, General Electric, Tesla. We often don't have any fixed income, that's bonds and treasury bills, in our portfolio. These fixed income bonds or treasury bills again act as a hedge against market risk. They don't go up very much, maybe a percent or two a year, but they also pretty much never go down. Bonds and treasury bills are safe. It is therefore wise to put a specific percentage of your portfolio in bonds or treasury bills. This will lower the market risk as you near retirement. For the TSP, equities or stocks are the C, S, and I fund, and fixed income is G fund treasuries and F fund bonds. I'm gonna give an easy to understand example of how this works. Let's say you have 50% or half your portfolio in stocks, maybe in the C fund, and the other half in bonds, maybe the F fund. In this case, when the market suddenly drops, let's say 30% in one day, your protected portfolio only drops half of that or 15%. Because you're only half invested in stocks, the bonds won't go down. That limits your downside. Here's the problem though. Let's say the same thing happens, but the market shoots up 30% in one day. Well, you only go up half of that or 15% because you're only half invested in stocks. It's a double-edged sword, but smart to do this as you get older and have a growing need to preserve your portfolio. Here are some easy to follow principles for achieving the right balance of stocks to bonds for your age and risk tolerance. I use the law of 120. When it comes to the percentage of your portfolio that should be in stocks, you subtract your age from 120. A 40-year-old would be 120 minus 40 equals 80% stocks, so you need 20% bonds, which means 20% F fund. Now you can invest in the TSP with confidence any year in any market condition. You know the secret that most people don't know. Pick an asset allocation and stick with it. The only thing you should change, if you want, is adding bonds to your portfolio to make the stock market drops less painful as you need near needing that money. How are you gonna invest your TSP? Let me know in the comments. This is Rich Carey. Here's a spot to subscribe to me because I'm awesome. Here's two other videos you could watch next if you wanna become even more awesome with money than you are now. Rich Carey, signing off.